Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to talk about fiber optic plenum cable. Specifically, we're gonna talk about what it is, why does it exist, and you know, really, why should you look for plenum cable or might you wanna look for plenum cable if you're running your own fiber optic cable through your house or your office? And we're also gonna talk a little bit about what the difference is between plenum cable, which is over here, and something like this, which is riser cable, but it's L S Z H riser cable. And if that doesn't mean anything to you now, it will by the end of this. And so will OFNP and OFNR. And so as a quick background here, this all came about when I decided it was time to go and run fiber through the house. At first, I'm just gonna run standard OM4 pairs to the different rooms. But then I kind of said, well, you know, if I'm gonna go and take all the time to go and run wire through walls anyway, I really should do something that's a little bit better. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably gonna need more than two strands anyway. So instead of having OM4 cable, I probably should do MTP12 because each one of those has 12 fibers. So instead of having two fibers going to each room, I could have 12 per cable. And that would really give me the bandwidth and the capacity to go do a lot of the kind of cool stuff that we need to here. And then of course, through the wonderful world of Twitter, Chris Berge, the SVP of ARM server division says, hey, uh, actually you should go run single mode fiber instead of multi-mode fiber. So that way you can run a whole bunch of 100 gig ethernet and faster. And since we've already done a number of bits on 100 gig ethernet switches and NICs and all kinds of stuff like that, it kind of seemed like, yeah, we've even done 400 gig ethernet. So it seemed like, yeah, maybe we should have single mode fiber as well. So instead of running something kind of simple, which is like this, which is just kind of standard MTP12 OM4 cable, which is plenum cable. Instead, what we're going to run is, oh my gosh, uh, hmm, I didn't really think this through. We're going to run uh, this thing here. And oh, by the way, this is only about the third of the size of this cable. So yeah, it's big. And if you want to know something more about that project, we're going to run something like 240 fibers to at least the studio the two offices, probably the server room, and maybe one or two other rooms as well. Let me know, we can do videos on those as well. That's a great use of the comment section. But while I was putting this together, I was chatting with some of the folks that write for STH, you know, Will, Eric, Rohit, for example, and we were just kind of chatting about some of the different options that I was looking at in terms of putting into the walls. And, you know, they had some feedback, which was really good and really insightful. And that feedback is that fiber optics are very difficult, especially if you don't live it every day. If you live it every day, you totally understand all this stuff. But if you don't live it every day, well, there's a lot of terminology there that kind of, I guess, gets a little bit scary for folks. And a good example of that is a lot of people will talk about single mode, multi-mode, we've already talked about those. They talk about OM4 versus, and all the OMs. They talk about the OS fibers. They talk about all that kind of stuff. There are plenty of people out there talking about LC, SC, MTP. And every once in a while, you get somebody talking about polarity, which is super important as well. But while people love to talk about connectors and they love to talk about, you know, the specs and the, you know, what kind of light and moving the light around, what is also important is just what goes around the cable. So not just the MTP12 connector, but then also, you know, this blue part right here, what is this made out of and why is it important? And that brings us to the discussion of plenum versus riser, OFNP versus OFNR, and also what the heck is LSZH? So let's first off start with what the heck is plenum anyway? And if you're a English speaker, you probably don't even run into the word plenum a lot unless you're in certain industries or you have certain hobbies. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that probably hear the word plenum like maybe once every five, 10 years or something like that. It's just not used that often in the English language. And also, if you're not a native English speaker, you may have never even heard that word. I was just having to explain this in Spanish and I had to go look up what that was. Probably the easiest thing, especially for folks that don't run fiber all the time, in terms of you know where you may have heard the word plenum, a big place that you probably hear it is in terms of like internal combustion engines. A lot of times you'll have like an air intake plenum or something like that. But if you're a non-native English speaker, there's a good chance you've just never heard the word. So the fact that we call this cable plenum cable and it's often labeled as plenum, it may just not make a lot of sense. So the best definition that Rohit could come up with, a plenum is a compartment or chamber to which one or more air ducts are connected and forms part of the air distribution system. So with that, let us get to just a diagram of an office building because the plenum, that kind of is really why this cable exists or one of the reasons that the cable exists really like kind of in office. So this diagram is a simple one-story office building just for now. And here we have five offices. Each of these offices has a floor has you know structural walls on the outside and then there's shorter walls in between the different offices and you know hey maybe these aren't just offices maybe they're you know offices and conference rooms for example but the idea here 
is that the ceiling is not necessarily the roof or the floor above. Instead, there are ceiling tiles above. And what that allows for is that allows for a space between the ceiling and roof. And you can basically hang things like lighting. You can have networking cable, APs, security cameras, all that kinds of stuff that you would probably want to put overhead. You can do that because you have that room and you can service it easily because you have that room between the ceiling that everybody sees, but then also the actual roof or ceiling in the building. And the really cool thing about that ceiling tile is that you can go and run cable all the way across different offices because the ceiling that people see is not actually the ceiling in the structure. So you have all this crawl space and it actually works really well. But the challenge is that often that plenum and that area, that chamber is part of the air distribution system. And so the challenge is if there is a fire, you basically have an oxygen rich environment that goes between all of the different offices. And so it allows for things like, you know, the fire to spread, but then also really smoke to spread between the offices very efficiently. At one point I was living in a house actually went on fire because of a squirrel that was chewing the wires. It goes on fire. And I can tell you that if a Havoc unit goes on fire and billows smoke, you are definitely going to see a very efficient and very fast distribution to all of the different rooms. There was smoke absolutely everywhere in a matter of seconds. So as a result, the National Electric Code, and that's really the code that is either, you know, the basis for or informs a lot of, you know, local codes or local building codes, that basically says that if you do put cable or any cable into a plenum space, it needs to be plenum rated cable that is rated for, you know, being fire resistant and also low smoke. As a result, if one runs fiber optic cable through that kind of air spaces, you know, the, the plenums, then you basically need to use plenum rated cable. And what that basically means is that this plastic that goes around the fiber optic cable has to be both fire resistant and also low smoke. It's kind of like one of those things that you hope you never have to deal with, but you basically go and do this just in case. And so going back to some of the terminology, OFNP means optical fiber, non-conductive, but we talked about the other one, which is riser or OFNR. So that would be optical fiber, non-conductive riser cable. And this is an example of that right here. Now, riser cable is really designed to be used in kind of those vertical things like walls or shafts or whatever that are not plenums, that are not part of that air distribution system, but that, you know, are basically meant to go from more or less floor to floor. In fact, the testing usually of riser cables is actually for their, you know, flame and smoke and stuff is actually done in a vertical manner. So going to our two-story office example, maybe you have a a shaft or something like that between the two floors. And that's maybe where you'd use something like a riser cable. So typically plenum cable is usually going to be, you know, more expensive and it's going to be less flexible than just riser cable is. But at the same time, you're usually allowed to run plenum cable in the same spaces that you would use riser cable. So if you just want to make life easy on yourself and you don't have, want to have junction boxes and all kinds of stuff like that, you can basically just go and run you know, plenum cable throughout an entire structure. And that's exactly what we're going to go do. Now, one other common marking you're going to see in this area is LSZH. And this actually is a riser cable from HP Enterprise, but it actually is LSZH rated riser cable. And LSZH stands for low smoke, zero halogen. But that means that this blue cable, which is my favorite color, is not only non halogenated, but it's also flame resistant. LSZH, because it's not halogenated means that you get, you know, less toxic fumes that come out of it and also less corrosive fumes if, you know, something happens. So examples of things that you don't necessarily find in the LSZH cables would be things like chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, basically all that stuff that you just don't want to breathe during a building fire. If you just want an example of what might be different between a plenum cable and an LSZH cable, an example is something like fluorine, which you would find potentially and kind of often find sometimes in uh, in plenum cable, but you don't necessarily find in LSZH cable. So for those of you on YouTube and our readers, hopefully this explains what a fiber optic plenum cable is. If you see things like OFNP, OFNR, or LSZH in a fiber optic cable, hopefully you can actually know what those mean. And also you know what to look for if you're going and purchasing fiber optic cable. Now, again, I'm just going to be putting a whole bunch of fiber optic cable in the walls. And if you want to see more about that, let me know in the comments down below. We can do probably some videos on that. And if you want to see some of this other stuff, especially since we are using higher end cable, let me know if there's any other topics you want us to cover as well. And hey, if you like this video, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.